Okay, welcome back uh, to part 10 yeah, of this chapter 20. Okay, we, uh, in the previous uh, clip, we were looking at uh, the reorder point, yeah, as I was as explaining this. Yeah. The reorder point quantity yeah, will be measured by T divided by 365 multiplied by S. Yeah. So, at this level of uh, inventory, the company must uh, issue the reorder, yeah? meaning they must order again from the suppliers. Okay, because it will take three days for the supplies to arrive, yeah? and therefore this amount of uh, uh, inventory would be enough. Yeah, it will slowly decline to zero. By the time it comes to zero, you get the new supplies. Yeah, so your uh, inventory level will go up to the order quantity. Yeah. So that is what we mean by reorder point. Okay, and then we look at the safety stock and the reorder point and how it uh, uh, affects, yeah, how it changes, yeah, modifies the uh, basic EOQ model, yeah, EOQ model in the next uh, slide. Yeah, but before that, we look at derived demand inventories. Yeah, is uh, not an extension actually of the EOQ model. But it is uh, a, a, an extension of the inventory methods that we have seen earlier. Yeah. Okay. So materials requirement planning or MRP yeah, is a very famous yeah, method of uh, managing inventory. Yeah. Basically, this is uh, used to uh, determine the inventory for uh, uh, raw material. Yeah. The various raw material materials and yeah, that's what we mean yeah materials means raw material or components yeah that are required to produce the finished goods okay so based on the demand for finished goods we can derive the demand for the material yeah so they don't only look at the demand for the finished goods but also look at the uh, variability the error uh, the safety stock and so on yeah, of the raw material yeah, to make sure that the production does not stop there are no production stoppages yeah but at the same time they're not uh, they are, there are no excess yeah, carrying costs yeah therefore this is what we mean by material requirements planning yeah? basically it tries to derive the demand for raw material from the demand for uh, finished goods yeah that is what we mean by material requirement planning yeah uh, this is very brief here. Uh, there is more material yeah, in the textbook, so please read about this yeah, material requirements planning. Then another famous yeah, uh, inventory management method is called just in time or JIT yeah, inventory method. Now this just in time, <coughs> the idea is to uh, hold minimal yeah, or zero inventory. Yeah. So can you have zero inventory? Yeah? Yes, okay, in some instances you can have zero inventory or very minimal inventory. Yeah? To hold minimal inventory, you need to integrate your supplier's inventory system together with your customer's inventory system. Yeah? So whenever you need, okay, this is not only integrate, yeah, the systems yeah, need to be integrated yeah, be uh, between or intercompany. Yeah? Uh, between companies yeah the system needs to be integrated so once you finish your inventory for example or you're about to finish the system will trigger yeah the system for the supplier and the supplier will send yeah just before your inventory finishes okay therefore you don't need to keep inventory yeah uh, um, as you uh, use the inventory it will be replenished by your supplier and you will uh, produce based on how your customer uses your finished goods okay so that's how just in time inventory uh, is managed yeah but uh, just in time is um, uh, popularized by the japanese yeah japanese management yeah uh, but uh, it has been uh, widely used in other countries as well Okay, but the idea here is to minimize the carrying of inventory, yeah, and at the same time, uh, check on the shortage costs, yeah, or sh the shortage of inventory by integrating it with your customer and your 
supplier so that there are no production stoppages there are no lost sales and so on yeah so it tries to tackle both yeah the carrying cost as well as the shortage cost and this is what we mean by just in time again here uh, there's not much material on the slides and there's more in the textbook so please read that yeah all right this is an extension of the basic eoq model yeah? the basic eoq model is something like this yeah this is the order quantity ignore this distance here yeah let's assume that the axis x-axis is here all right so every time you order this is the amount that you order then uh, your uh, inventory level yeah, goes down yeah? because you sell off your inventory it goes down gradually at a fixed rate yeah then when it becomes zero this is zero here yeah then you reorder again the same quantity okay then you start selling once you order you get the uh, material immediately yeah your inventory immediately that is why it's like uh, you know a saw teeth yeah you can see saw yeah like a saw right okay the teeth of the saw yeah so it goes up and then it gradually comes down then again you order it goes up again yeah so this is your order quantity yeah? the distance between this point and this point is your order quantity okay that is the basic UQ model yeah if the axis here this red line here goes up here okay then this is the basic UQ model yeah but now we are looking at the extension yeah the first extension is the minimum quantity remember so what we do is we push the curve up yeah, by the minimum quantity okay so this increases your carrying cost yeah? your carrying cost goes up yeah? but your shortage cost does not go up yeah? it remains the same yeah but your minimum uh, your carrying cost will go up yeah now this is the uh, uh, what do you call extension yeah once you have the minimum quantity your curve goes up yeah, by the amount of minimum quantity the second extension that we have seen this is the order quantity this is the minimum quantity yeah? this is the minimum quantity level this is the order quantity this is the order quantity here yeah okay then the second extension is this if this is the delivery time yeah let's say this is t okay so based on the rate this is actually s divided by 365 yeah this gradient okay is s the uh, quantity sold per year divided by 365 this is the rate of sale per day yeah okay so this multiplied by t will be your reorder point or reorder level okay so it tells you the quantity uh, at at which point you must make the order so let's say it here yeah? as the quanti the quantity or the inventory level goes down here at this point you start ordering from your supplier but in the meantime while your supplier is sell, uh, sending you the goods yeah, or the inventory your inventory goes down further yeah, daily right it goes down at this point when it becomes zero your supplier already sends you the inventory so it goes up yeah to this level again yeah so it does not change the nature of the curve like this yeah, the saw teeth here that you see it does not change yeah but it just tells you that you have to order earlier you don't order at time zero is that okay because there is a reorder level due to the delivery lead time yeah if there's no delivery lead time then your reorder level your reorder point is zero yeah under the basic model the reorder point is zero that means your quantity when your inventory level drops to zero then only you order and the assumption is you will receive the order immediately okay so that's the basic uh, model assumption yeah so here with the extension we relax that assumption we know that there is a delivery time so therefore you need to order earlier is that okay any questions okay yeah if you have questions you can uh, state in your co in the comment yeah? uh, in YouTube okay now we come to the conclusion yeah we summarize what we have uh, looked at in this chapter throughout this chapter yeah the first part we have looked at the key issues associated with credit management yeah which is basically trying to weigh the two costs yeah weigh and optimize yeah minimize the total cost of uh, uh, carrying receivables and not having too much receivables yeah so the the lack of receivables as well as too much receivables we try and uh, strike a balance yeah to minimize the 
total yeah, uh, receivables cost yeah, or total credit cost. Yeah. So what are the cash flows from granting credit? Okay, we have seen the cash flows. By granting credit, you have increased sales. Okay, you can also increase the price. Okay, therefore this will increase your cash flow. Yeah. By the same time, you will also uh, have cash outflow. Yeah, because you uh, there will be a delay in the cash flow. Yeah, uh, because the cash flows will be. Uh, uh, deferred yeah you don't collect immediately because you grant credit the cash flows will come in later so is the later cash flow sometimes higher cash flow due to credit yeah your cash flows may be higher but it will be delayed now is this delay uh, worth it yeah you want to see the present value of this increased cash flow is it greater than not the cash flow uh, arising from not granting credit Okay, so this is uh, this is what we try and address here. Yeah, then the third question is how would you analyze a change in credit policy? Yeah, we have seen seen that. Yeah, the analysis of credit policy change. Yeah, we look at the change in credit policy. Let's say uh, cash only policy to uh, thirty net thirty uh, credit policy. Yeah, we have seen how this analysis is being done. Yeah, we call this the net present value analysis okay so we have looked at that yeah we use the net present value analysis to uh, look at the change in the credit policy if the net present value is positive then we uh, change the policy if it is negative then we retain the old policy the existing policy yeah okay how would you analyze whether to grant credit to a new customer okay we need to use the NPV analysis okay if it's a new customer is it a one-time sale or is it a repeat sale yeah you need to look at that yeah so there are two formulas that you can use okay if it's a one-time sale then you use if the net present value is positive then you grant credit if it is negative then you don't grant credit the same principle yeah uh, applies when it's a repeat sale yeah and in this yeah the crucial element is the probability of default of the new customer okay if the probability of default in uh, for the new customer is high then you might not want to grant credit to the customer yeah we have seen that uh, in this chapter then what is ABC inventory management okay we have just seen that yeah in this uh, uh, in this second half of this chapter ABC uh, divides the inventory into three categories of inventory yeah? type A means expensive inventory yeah so you hold less because the carrying cost will be very high yeah okay and uh, inventory C will be uh, high shortage cost but then uh, low uh, cost yeah low uh, I mean the price is not so expensive yeah and therefore you will hold a lot of uh, invent uh, C type yeah inventory okay B will be somewhere in between yeah A and uh, C yeah so uh, by categorizing like A you uh, monitor very closely yeah C you buy uh, a lot and you don't monitor very closely but B you do it moderately yeah basically that is what ABC inventory management is right then how do you use the EOQ model to determine the optimal inventory level EOQ model determines the uh, economic order quantity or the order quantity that minimizes yeah, the total inventory holding cost that is why we call this the economic order quantity yeah? and we have seen the formula for doing that okay and we have also seen the extensions to that yeah okay now we look at this comprehensive problem yeah what is the effective annual rate for credit terms to net uh, 210 net 30 okay we have seen the formula this is 1 plus 2 over to uh, 1 minus 2 percent yeah or we can take uh, uh, 2 over uh, or 1 divided by 1 minus 2 percent yeah also th that is also possible okay but we can do it this way yeah 1 plus r raised to the power of m yeah m here is 365 divided by 30 minus 10 yeah all right previously we had used 45 45 days here we use 30 yeah so you minus one this becomes 44.58 percent yeah? so this is quite huge yeah large why because the credit yeah the credit term is very short yeah 
this two percent if you forego okay this uh, discount yeah if you forego this will be very expensive